We're making bacon, onion, Brussels sprouts. For this little recipe, it's real simple. It's red onion, it's bacon, and Brussels sprout. Here's a little tip if you don't like doing dishes and cleaning pans, which I don't. I like to line my pan with tin foil so that when I'm done, I can just take out the tin foil and maybe lightly rinse the pan a little bit and we're done. So what I like to do is I'll seal, seal two pieces together like this so that I have a big enough surface area. And then one, once I got it sealed like that, I can now unfold it and place it in the pan and it won't leak through the middle. So then I just line the pan with the tin foil, making sure to press it into the corners. So we got the pan lined. I like to take my cake cooling racks and put them in there. And I'll put this diced up item all on this rack right here. That way it's not baking down in the grease. It gives the grease somewhere to fall so that it's not in the Brussels sprout. And then I'll take my Brussels sprouts. So I'm gonna cut the end off and save the leaves because if you bake the leaves, they come out so crispy. It's like little bacon crispy bits. And then these are big ones, so I'll quarter them. And you're gonna want to reduce the size of the Brussels sprout so that it will cook. If I were to cook these whole, you'd have to cook them for over an hour. Okay, so there we go. Next will be the onion. And I like to go just based on visual, you know, it's no set amount. Um, I like to get my Brussels cut up first so that I can see how much onion I might need. I'll start with a half an onion just to see how, how it looks. And it doesn't have to be finely diced. It can just be in roughly diced chunks. And so a little bit more. You're looking for maybe about a third. So about a third of the amount of um, Brussels sprout, you're gonna want about a third of the amount of onion. And then I'm just gonna break it apart, the onion that I cut up. I'm gonna hit all of that with a little bit of olive oil just to kind of lube everything up because the bacon won't be letting go of any of its grease right away and so you're gonna want a little something to keep it from sticking to your pan. And mixing it up like this too is also gonna help break the onion apart. See how it's kind of stuck together. This is also a good time to add any seasoning. Once again, I like it real simple. I just use garlic powder, onion powder, a good quality Himalayan pink salt, and peppercorns. I use this seasoning on everything, from meat to vegetables. Um, it just adds a nice dynamic flavor range. OK, 
Okay, now we mix it up. Okay, then next is the bacon. I'm looking for about a third of the amount and I'm gonna cut it just in, in more manageable chunks. And once again, I'm keeping my fingers folded so that I don't slice into my finger. little bit more. So that's a pretty good ratio. And I'm just going to toss this together again, just to kind of mix the bacon throughout and kind of get it also broken apart. I got my pan here that I prepped earlier. And I'm just going to take this and just spread it out on here. Give you another chance to to break apart any bits. And I'm just trying to make an even layer. This might be a little much. You don't want it stacked up on each other. Like you just, you want one layer of Brussels. You start adding layers and it starts to get soggy. It doesn't give it a chance to get crispy. The only thing you need to do now is you just set your oven to 350 and cook it for 40, 35 to 45 minutes. And that's what you're looking for. The nice crispy edges. Mmm, and the bacon is done. And the Brussels are soft. I can take a fork and the fork easily goes in. That tells me that they're done and they're ready to eat. 